Life is speaking to us through the desires that we have. The desires that you have are holy and sacred and good. It is how life is informing where we need to go. The illusion is, is that we're going to heal ourselves one day and then maybe we'll get to have what we want. One day I'm going to get to the bottom of this. And then I can have love. That's, that's not accurate. If you had a disturbance in your childhood where you felt unloved, unwanted, unsafe, you're kind of always going to be healing from that. You're never really, I mean, none of us really ever get over when we were abused. You know, it's a heartache. Maybe every Christmas you'll feel sad. You didn't have Christmas presents on Christmas morning when you were a kid. That's okay. What we want to do is stop identifying with the self that we formed in response. Okay? So that we can actually generate our lives outside of that story. And we can actually begin to identify with the self of the future. We cannot create the future from the, from the self that we formed in, the pa in response to trauma in the past. And in some ways, some of us have stayed in therapy and in the story, dissecting and analyzing the story a little too long because what's happened is that we've become overly identified with that story. What you focus on increases, grows. Where we want to start to place our focus is on the future that we're committed to creating. Werner Earhart says you must create the future from the future and not the past. So this is about you setting a very big intention in this particular area. So I'm going to give you a moment just to close your eyes, take a deep breath. And I want you to allow yourself to yearn for that which you yearn for. Because life is speaking to us through the desires that we have. The desires that you have are holy and sacred and good. It is how life is informing where we need to go. What is the future that is calling to you, that is wanting to come to you, that is your destiny to have? Do not worry about the gap between where you are right now and that future. Do not worry that you do not know how that would ever happen. And set an intention that is about what shall be so and put it in the affirmative and make it big and beautiful and that which would make meaning of everything you've ever been through. That future that if you actually stepped into that life, it would all have worked out. It would all have been worth it. And when you have it, just open your eyes and write it down. My intention is to become, create, have. My intention is. Okay. So let's have the person with the shortest hair go first. Which I think is you. <laughs> Okay, so, so what you're going to do is you're going to share the area. Shh, shh, shh. You just share the area that, you, that you, are, um, you are taking on today and share what you've done up till now and what the pattern has been and, be, and share the future and the intention. Okay, it's all the things we've been looking at. And you'll have about five minutes each. Okay, so you can go now. Start now. If you clarified your intention further, then you might want to write it down. The, the, the more clarity you have. 
See, I think that the truth is that a lot of our unhappiness that we've been trying to figure out and get to the source of by going and kind of looking at what happened to us in the past, we think that's the source of our unhappiness or the frustration of what we don't yet have in our present. I think actually the source of our unhappiness is that we've been out of integrity with the future that's wanting to happen. You know, and an example of that, just think for anyone who's ever, you know, struggled with their weight, for example. You don't have to be at goal weight to feel hopeful and to feel on track. You just need like three good days of eating really clean and in integrity. And suddenly you just start to feel that, you know, spring in your step and you're happy again. You haven't lost 20 pounds in three days, but you're in integrity with the future that you're committed to. And where we're most out of integrity with the future, where the gap is most severe, is where we've been really anchored in and overly identified with the self that we created in response to some kind of usually relational trauma. Whatever area it's in. That somehow we were not recognized, not loved, not seen, not safe, not wanted, that we were too much, that we weren't good enough. And that consciousness is gripping us in this area because it, the wounding was so great in this area. And we're overly identified with that story. So where we want to go is to begin to recognize that the part of us that's holding the story is a younger self that beliefs are kind of lodged in the body. They're actually in the body. They're in the energetic field of the body. They're in the emotional default place that we go to. A lot of them are not even named yet. They're kind of outside language, particularly if you formed that consciousness before you actually had language, like where you were in the crib or you were in the womb. Or for some of us, it was a past life. It doesn't even have anything to do with this life. It's just a consciousness that you kind of breathed in. It might be the consciousness that you inherited from your ancestors. It might be your mother's unfinished business or your father's agony that you breathed into your body and called it an I am. And when we're going to do an exercise a little later on where we have you connect with that part of your body and we have you name the age of that self, not as an actual, this really happened. It's not factual. It's the felt sense in the body. Where is it living? You know, what, what does it mean when we get triggered is that we actually default to overly identifying with that story. Suddenly the I that you are is the I of that story. I am alone. I am unloved. I am not seen. I am not safe right now. And that becomes home base in this area. And then you'll do all sorts of things to just try and compensate for that and get over that or get rid of that. And we've been trying to figure it out by analyzing it, right? One of the reasons we haven't been able to evolve is because we haven't brought that part of ourselves into relationship with the part of ourselves that's actually deeply wise and very mature and very developed and has a lot of skills and a lot of capacities. So a major part of evolving beyond beliefs has to do with the relationship you have with yourself and your ability to, to connect your resourceful self, your trustworthy self, the part of you that 
you know, your, your friends come to you for advice because you're always so count onable. You're always so kind. You're always so wise. Or maybe you're a, a parent who's really loving to your children. Or maybe you're a good team leader or a good team player and you elevate the whole energy of the team or you're someone that others can count on professionally. We all have these places where we actually do show up and shine and we're incredibly talented and gifted and trustworthy. It's getting that self in relationship with the younger self because what happens when you're triggered is you go and overly, suddenly you become the younger self and where is your adult self? Nowhere. He or she left the room. Not there at all. So the trick to being able to evolve is to begin to bring these two parts of you into relationship so that your adult, wise, resourceful, intelligent, developed self is always present. So I want to do a kind of a preliminary exercise with you right now. Um, and I want to demonstrate it first and then give you a little time to do it before lunch. And it, it's just about holding the tenderness of another person. And it's kind of a preliminary to two things. One is you're going to be working with each other this afternoon to hold the tenderness of each other. And two, it's ultimately seeding you holding the tenderness of yourself. Okay, so can I get a volunteer to come up on the stage? Somebody who is kind of tender. You tender? All right, come up and be tender with me. And I will take another chair, please. Thank you. This is a very simple exercise. So in this exercise, I'm going to demonstrate, I'm going to be partner A. And we have a chair coming here. You, you sit there. Thank you. I'm Catherine. <laughs> Hi, Eric. Thank you. Thank you for coming up. So um, we're going to pretend that they're not really here, but we love you. Don't feel ignored by us. We love you. But this is between Eric and I. This is personal. <laughs> Ooh. So I'm partner A, and what I'm going to... Is this on? Do we have this on? You want to say Hi. We need the microphone on. Thank you, Eric. Hello. There you go. Hello. Hello. So as partner A, I'm just going to drop down, and I'm going to get just a tiny bit closer to you because I love your blue nail polish. <laughs> okay. So... Um, so as partner A, I'm just going to drop into a deeper center and I'm going to get very present and I'm just going to surround Eric with a sense of safety and warmth and presence. I'm going to just slow everything down and then I'm basically going to ask him just two questions. First question is, what are you feeling? And I'm going to give him a chance to look inside himself to see what he's feeling. And then he'll tell, uh, tell me. And then I'm going to just mirror it back and really get it. And then I'll ask him again, what are you feeling? And we'll repeat that until he's kind of said everything that's present. And then um, I'll ask him, what do you need? And do the same thing. Okay, that's simple. All right, so. So, Eric, what are you feeling? Sadness. 
sadness. Oh. Mm -hmm. I can see that you feel sadness. What else are you feeling? Have some fears. What is it? Have some fears. Uh, some fears. So you, you feel a little scared right now. Some fear. Mm. You can see that you have some fears right now. What else are you feeling? I feel seen. Mm. I can see that you feel seen. What else are you feeling? Silly. <laughs> <laughs> I can see that you feel a little silly. <laughs> okay. And what else are you feeling? Curious. Uh, I can see that you're feeling curious. And what do you need? I don't know. <laughs> mm, you don't know what you need. I know what I desire. Mm -hmm. You know what you desire. What do you desire? To see in me what hasn't, what others haven't mm. in the past. Because mm -hmm. I think my reality has changed now a lot. Is it that you desire to be seen more deeply? To see yourself? to be truly seen for who I am mm -hmm. and not for what, for what, what, I, what others have wanted me to be. Ah, oh. is that something you need? To be seen for who you are, you need that? Yeah, it yeah. is a need. It is a need. So you need to be seen for who you are and not for who others have wanted you to be. That's right. What else do you need? Something, but you don't know what it is. <laughs> Got it. Because I feel pretty wealthy. Life has been generous to me, nevertheless. Mm. 
Do you feel pretty wealthy? And you're aware that life has been really good to you. Mm -hmm. Amen. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Beautiful. So I just want to give us an opportunity to do this with each other. We didn't ask Eric how that was for you. How was that? You want to give Eric the microphone back, please? Thank you. A little bit, a little bit strange. <laughs> a little strange. Um, I think it offers an opportunity to to truly face certain areas of who we are without escaping it. Because it almost creates like a certain level of accountability when the person is actually mirroring it back to you. And at least as before my experience, it's easy for me to be like focusing on others or focusing on what I would like to do yeah. and dismiss maybe those parts of me yeah. that requires me to be a little bit more attention. Yeah, it's a lot to just have somebody so present, right? It's beautiful. Thank you for that. It was beautiful to sit with you. It was touching for me. So um, I just want you to give an opportunity to practice this with each other. Um, so you can partner up again. You can work with the same partner. If you want to choose a different partner, it's okay. But just partner up with each other. And choose who's going to be A first. How about the person with the lightest eyes be partner A first? Okay, and anyone not have a partner who needs a partner? Okay, we need one partner over here. Anyone? Oh, you need a partner to stand up. If you need a partner, stand, and then the two of you can find each other. Okay, great. Anyone else? Okay, good. So again, partner A, I'm going to talk you through this about how to anchor and actually, I'll have you close your eyes for a minute and just drop your awareness down into your body. So I'll, I'll talk you through that in a moment. And then you're going to open your eyes and extend your presence, a sense of warmth and, and care around your partner. And then you're going to mirror back the feelings and needs. You're going to ask, what are you feeling? And you really listen. And mirror it back. You don't have to mimic it. What you're doing is you're letting your heart be touched mostly. You're just really letting yourself be empathetic and to connect with what your partner's saying. And when they've kind of emptied themselves of their feelings, then you go to, what do you need? Eric threw me a little bit of a curveball. He said, I don't know what I need, but I know what I desire. So I followed him a little bit, but it wasn't the best modeling. But I think it was the right thing to do in the moment. You know, just going with Eric. I'm serving Eric in that moment. So um, if your partner gives you a curveball, you know, go with it a little bit. But see if you can stick with the exercise. You're not there to process their feelings or anything. You just It's really an exercise in being deeply present and trustworthy with holding the space with that person. Okay, so partner A, close your eyes right now. And just taking a nice deep breath as though you could breathe all the way down into your hips. Just moving your awareness down into your body, extending your energy down through your legs into the earth and out to the edges of the room. Just connecting with this deeper, wider center within you. And then just opening your eyes and facing your partner, extending a sense of warmth around your partner. And when you feel connected and ready, just start with the first question, what are you feeling? 
I have about three minutes. All right. So now we're going to shift. So if you're the new partner A, just inviting you to close your eyes for a moment now. And take a nice deep breath as so you could breathe all the way down into your hips. Just extending your energy down through your legs, imagining you're extending your energy down into the earth, out through the bottoms of your feet, down, down, down. Extending your energy out to the edges of the room. Now just opening your eyes and silently extending your presence and your warmth, a sense of care all around your partner. And when you feel connected, just asking the first question, what do, what are you feeling? What are you feeling? You can begin. How was that experience? Anyone want to share about that experience? Yes, yeah. We have the microphone. Where's the microphone? Someone down. You want to stand up so you can share? Yeah. Thank you. Um, that was a really powerful exercise um, to have someone hold space for you to really explore out loud. Um, and I think it was really, um, I realized how much I don't even inquire about what I need. Wow. And then speaking it out loud, it's just, it makes it tangible. Mm-hmm. So it was really powerful. Thank That's you. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I found it extremely difficult to look uh, into the eyes of someone else for five minutes. <laughs> and I, I just had to close my eyes maybe every 30 seconds and take a deep breath in mm-hmm. to recreate that connection. Mm-hmm. Thank you for that. Thank you, yeah. So I just want to say, for us it was very beautiful to, to see in each other what we were experiencing here as a whole. Um, and to acknowledge that what, what we see happening here in Mind Valley U, our, our biggest fear is that we cannot actually take it away with us and when we go to our regular lives. Mm-hmm. But if, if you see it and you f- if you can feel it here and if you can experience this, it's because it's in you. Oh, it's beautiful. It's in you. It's, so of course we can take it with us, of course. So it's, it's a sense of deep gratitude and restored hope in humanity. Oh, that's gorgeous. You are beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Right over in back of you. There we go. Hi. Um, that was a really powerful exercise because I felt that it was the first time that my inner self was being heard. Wow. And um, that somebody was going to listen with patience and love. So I was, it just like an aha moment. I can do this with myself Ah. every day Ah. because my partner A is my wiser self. 
You you blew my punchline. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you get the gold star. <laughs> Isn't you know, that gorgeous? I was just thinking, I can do this with myself every day. I and, love that. Um, I even yeah. have a handout for all of you guys where I have a handout of this practice in dyads and then how you do it for yourself. So thank, thank you, you for yeah. sharing this wonderful exercise with Oh, us, you're Catherine. so welcome. <laughs> That's beautiful. Because you see, the ability to hold yourself tenderly like that is what's actually required to be able to shift out of a false center and into a deeper truth. It is that relationship with ourselves where at any time we can turn towards ourselves. Sweetheart, what are you feeling? I can see that you're feeling. So when you get triggered, you suddenly, and I'll just, you know, I'll give you a little secret. It's worded very specifically. It's not saying, how am I, how am I feeling? Because again, the I is still the I that's triggered sometimes. But if you say, sweetheart, how are you or what are you feeling? You're not only labeling your feelings, which in the world of psychotherapy is called affect labeling. Studies show that the moment we put language to a feeling, it starts to de-escalate in its intensity. Suddenly we have our feeling, it doesn't have us. This is how we start to actually not take action from a false center. If you get triggered and take action, you can only generate evidence for your old story. So we have to interrupt the process of getting triggered and picking up the phone or writing the text. We have to interrupt the process. We have to slow it down. You say, sweetheart, what are you feeling? Suddenly your adult self is there. It's you talking to yourself. What are you feeling? So you've created that relationship between these two parts of yourself. You're suddenly bringing yourself into identification with your wisdom self, with your kind, tender self. You're able to ask this of yourself and you're, and you're also holding and containing the feelings and helping yourself to calm down. Now, if you really want to get advanced with the practice, you can actually say, honey, what's the meaning you're making of what's happening right now that's informing these feelings and needs? And I'm going to teach you an exercise this afternoon, which really wakes you up to the deeper truth so that then you can massage whatever's going on and you can talk to that younger self and say, no, sweetheart, what's really true is. What's really true is, this is this internal development that for many of us have been missing in being able to really create our lives from the deeper truth and not from the part of us that's traumatized, right? Um, so on that, we are exactly on time. It is 26, 25, 24 seconds left. Anyone want to share before we leave the room? Yes, sir. Yeah. Um, okay, first, I, I, I really want to thank you for, because it's, it's something to create the space for someone, yeah. but it's something else to create the space for all of us. So I really want to thank you for that. Yeah. And, um, and secondly, I, I'm, I'm very grateful for the partner that I, that I had in this exercise, David, because um, there's a warmth and tenderness that I experienced just by just by looking at, looking into my partner's eyes and once he started to to speak it was it was evident that warmth was evident look at what's happening out of your intention you already had this magnificent experience with another man of warmth and love <laughs> It's, it's something, unfortunately, it's something very rare in, in, our, 
in, in the world today, mm -hmm. this mutual recognition between men. Yeah. Well, and uh, thank you for creating that space. You know what? And maybe that's yours to pr begin to generate in the world. Yeah. You know, when we see that things are missing, there you go. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so we're going to take a two-hour lunch break, and I so look forward to being with you again this afternoon where we get to the real juicy part of shifting centers, waking you up. Okay, thank you, everyone. So let's put everything to one side for a moment and just have you close your eyes for a second here. Put everything down, uncross your legs. Close your eyes. Take a nice deep breath as though you could breathe all the way down into your hips. And just turning towards yourself and saying, sweetheart, what are you feeling right now? And seeing if you can just check in with yourself and name a feeling that you're having. And when you find it, just mirroring it back. I can see that you're feeling. And what else are you feeling? And again, mirroring it back. I can see that you're feeling. And one more time, what else are you feeling? Mirroring it back, I can see that you're feeling. Now asking, sweetheart, what do you need? I can see that you need. What else do you need? I can see that you need. And one more time, what else do you need, sweetheart? I can see that you need. And just extending love to yourself. And when you're ready, opening your eyes. So you can learn how to do that even with your eyes open as you're out walking or take a moment to breathe at work and check in with yourself or you're out on a first date and you feel nervous. You just check in with yourself. So, do we have any new people here who were not here for the morning session? Oh, welcome. Okay, so we have a little bit of catching up to do, I see. So, who can share one thing that you really got out of the morning session as a way to catching our friends up? Who's willing to share so that we can all be together moving forward? Because you guys are jumping right into the deep end of the pool. Yes, thank you. Stand up so that it's over here. Thank you. Um, so what I got from the earlier session is that um, before in other training personal development programs, you kind of learn to work on your inner child when you're in a good place. Um, so that when you're in trigger, it, all of that work kind of disappears. Mm -hmm. And that process that we just went through 
gave us access to understanding that we can connect our higher selves to our inner child in the moment when the trigger appears so that you can diffuse it. And then that gives you space to make a decision from a better place. Beautiful. Well said, thank you. Thank you. Who else can recap a little bit and catch us up? Yes, thank you. Stand up. Thank you. Thank you for running. Hi, I'm Joni from outside Toronto. Joni. Um, you had us set our future intentions. And then one of the big things that I took away is, am I living right now to match those future intentions? Mm. If I'm holding on to past things, I can't get to the future. It's almost like, where is your attention? And our attention is kind of trained in our psychotherapy, psychotherapeutically sophisticated culture now to go back into the past. The moment we feel stopped, we go right back into the past and what the wound was and what the problem was. And what I'm saying is that if, you know, and that's all great work. That's all beautiful work. It's not, we don't live in an either or universe. This is a yes and conversation. But if you want to have a miracle, you'd better source yourself from the future and not the past. That's yes. beautiful. Thank you. Who else? Yes, someone over here. Oh, yes. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, Joni. <laughs> um, again, and about intention, that um, you talked about intention being very, very different from just wanting something, desiring something. Um, because when you're coming from a place of want or desire, that's more of a place of lack. I don't have it yet. I want it. Please give it to me now. Whereas intention right. is really stepping into, living into, taking action toward. Yeah, well, that's that beautiful. Which you want. The the root of the of the word want, the Latin root of the word want, means from lack. The root of the word desire is to await what the stars will bring. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. the difference between. Um, well, a lot of us shut down our desires because we don't want to be needy. Mm -hmm. Neediness is desire that's anchored in a false center. If you have a belief that you can never have what you want, then desire is painful. If you are anchored in, you know, my desires are good, they're holy, life is wanting to bring this to me, I have the potential to create this, I'm a powerful person then desire is actually pleasurable. Mm -hmm. Then it's a superpower. It is a superpower, and that's where we stand in it, and it shall be so. <sighs> yeah. Great, thank you. Anyone else? Thank you. Yes, and then to you, Linda. Is it Linda? Get ready, guys. Okay, get ready. <laughs> Woo! Touchdown. Okay, so the biggest thing that I really took away from this morning session where I feel like I'm having a major breakthrough is thinking about what part you are playing in the patterns that continue to occur in your life. Like yes. that's where you get your power from. It is. It's not just, oh, I keep attracting these unavailable men or whatever it is. Can I just tell you something? <laughs> All women attract unavailable yes. men. We all do that. They just I don't, don't sleep with them. Yes. Yes. <laughs> okay. So what part am I playing? <laughs> Healthy women do not take them home and put yes. them into bed. Yes. Right. We send them love and send them back on their way. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so yes. So focus on what part you are playing in the patterns in your life. Where can you change that right. from the future? And that it's specific. So just from your example yeah. of, you know, women who do take unavailable men home, maybe the way of being is to have very low expectations that anyone would ever be there for you. Mm. Maybe the way of being is that you rush into relationship before you've negotiated for your own needs and you actually understand what this means to each of you. Right. 
<laughs> Maybe the way of being is that you don't actually value yourself and so you're giving your sexuality to try and prove your value rather than it's an expression of what's already opening up between you. This is what we're looking for because when we see this clearly, then you see the possibility of doing it differently opens up. That's gorgeous. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. And right in front of you. Right in front of you. Thank you. So, of course, she and I were together. I'm Lynn, and we were together, and we had the same issue, and we actually had the same response to your question, that it's really about looking at how are you truly responsible for what you created in the reality of your life. Because I'm an amazing manifester in every area of my life mm -hmm. except love and connection. Mm -hmm. So um, what role did I play in that? And how can I change that for the future? That's beautiful. Yeah, so. thank you. Thank you. I think there's this, uh, you know, there used to be in the science of mind movement an emphasis on self as source and how I'm creating this. And then somehow what happened is we stopped doing that because people were sliding into self-hatred and, and self-blame and frustration and anger towards themselves. And I just got invited to a conference, to speak at a conference around sexuality and in particular people who had had partners who cheated on them who were sex addicts. And, um, and the, the woman and I got into kind of a conversation about how even the therapeutic community does not want to push on people too much to take personal responsibility because they don't want to blame the victim. So all of these are understandable, but we're not talking about a kind of disempowered self-reflection where you go into self-hatred or self-blame, which basically is fundamentally the question of what's wrong with me. What we're doing is we're actually objectively looking at how am I showing up? Who am I being? Where am I centered in consciousness? What are the actual behaviors that are training people to show up differently? So if somebody had a, an addict who kind of got broadsided because they found out their partner was a sex addict, I might begin to look into you know, the lies that they were living with and what part of them, you know, is lying to themselves. Now that might seem like a harsh question, but if you really think of the future where somebody is not, is, see, if, if you don't ask that question, that person will never trust love again because they won't get their part in that. They will always feel like at any moment they could get broadsided. So we, we have to look for the way that we have actually been colluding in those areas, those patterns where we've been in the most pain so that we can access a sense of power and possibility of having it be different on the other side. It's actually where transformation lies. So there's something called empowered self-reflection, which is making sure that you're asking yourself a question that is designed to grow you. So that it's, it's, so that it's, it's not a shamed based question. And a lot of times when we feel bad about something that happened or we feel heart sick about something that is a perpetual pattern, we'll kind of just default within ourselves to a question like what's wrong with me? How can I be so screwed up? How, how is it that I've done so much work on myself and I still am manifesting this or I can't manifest this? How is it that other people get to have this so easily, but not me? Those are shame-based questions. Those are not growth-oriented questions. But a growth-oriented question, how did I give my power away? What am I assuming is true that's having me compensate in this way and give myself away and humiliate myself, not set boundaries, not stand for myself? What development am I missing? What skills and capacities am I missing that would allow me to show up differently? See, we're not perpetuating our beliefs, I don't think, chronically because we're trying to heal. Because I think that when our beliefs show up again like a pattern, our painful beliefs show up again like a pattern, I don't think that's a healing experience. I think that's a re-wounding experience. And it causes us to doubt ourselves and all the work that we've done. We are duplicating these old patterns because we're missing certain skills and capacities that we didn't learn when we were young. They weren't modeled for us. They weren't allowed in our home. We were punished for speaking up for ourselves. 
they were either acute traumas, somebody died, there was a beating, something traumatic happened, you got kicked out of school, or it was a developmental trauma. You had a narcissist for a mother. You never got the proper mirroring. So that's missing development, the ability to mirror yourself, to even know what you feel and even know what you need. And isn't it a better use of our time to turn towards the missing development than to keep trying to get to some place of healing so that one day, maybe, we can finally be free of this pattern? Now, that might be, it might be age speaking. Because some of you are young, and so you're just kind of starting. But after 20 years, 30 years, 40 years of working on these things, you kind of get it that a lot of those conversations are a bit of a bottomless pit. And that the reason the pattern keeps showing up again and again is because there's literally missing pieces in how you're thinking and how you're organized. So I want to backtrack again. So thank you for all that. You guys feel a little bit caught up now? Okay, good. Thank you.